of uh, this, uh, this doctor, um, Megan Mc, McAuto, make it Megan McAuto. Megan is a scientist. She's a, uh, my understanding is she's a virologist. She is, uh, she's an expert in, on viruses. And uh, Megan got cancer, breast cancer, uh, for the third time. She had already had a mastectomy in uh, one of her breasts, and the cancer came back. This is not good when cancer starts coming back like that. Um, and, you know, Megan did not want to go through another round of chemotherapy and all the cancer drugs that are involved. And, uh, and she went and she, she did, did some research into what are alternatives. And uh, she found interesting a, a new line of research that is going on right now that uh, uses viruses uh, where you inject the viruses into the tumor and the virus both attack the body in attacking the virus attacks the cell cancer cells. So the body itself, what the virus does is stimulates the body itself to fight the cancer. Uh, so she basically uh, created a regime for herself, completely experimental, but uh, nobody had done this for breast cancer. Nobody had done this for, I think she was stage three. Nobody had done this for that stage of cancer or this type of cancer. Uh, there had been some promising research in other cancers. There is one cancer in which this is now a treatment where a virus is injected, um, is injected uh, uh, into this, into uh, the tumor, and it, it has shown very promising results. You know, and and uh, this is one of those potential future treatments that might, uh, that might become, uh, you know, uh, uh, might become mainstream in five to 10 years, given the way the FDA works, given the way research works, given the way, given that you have to test these and you have to do, uh, uh, you have to see side effects and you have to see long-term, what happens long-term and you have to see all, you know, all of these things, right? Anyway, what she decided was she was going to do this to herself. Um, and that she was going to basically uh, take, uh, basically, in her lab, uh, do you create a virus? What do you do? You grow a virus? She was going to grow the relevant viruses, purify them, and inject them, have a colleague of hers inject them into her own tumor. Uh, and she used, which was different than other experimental regimes, she used two different viruses. One, interestingly enough, she used a measles virus. Oh my God, RFK must be furious about this. Uh, this is the measles virus that is used in the measles vaccine. Um, so you remember vaccines use a segment of a virus to stimulate an immune response. That's exactly what she did. So she took the measles virus, not the full virus, but, but whatever they use in the vaccine to stimulate the immune response. And then um, she took a second virus uh, that I don't know, um, a uh, vesicular stomatitis, stomatitis virus, VSV, which is, I think, like a, a flu -y virus, a virus that causes kind of a flu -y symptoms. And she developed a regime where she injected both viruses into her tumor. And the tumor basically shrunk, detached itself from the, I guess, the muscle wall, and was easily extracted uh, with simple surgery. And it was a massive success, and she's been cancer-free now for four years. She did this during COVID. And then what she decided to do was she decided to publish this. And she wrote it up. She wrote it up as a paper, a scientific paper. You know, she, 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 she knew the protocol. She knew, she, she, she knew everything she did because she did it herself. And uh, she submitted it to journals. And journals basically say, no, we can't publish this. We don't approve of self-experimentation. 
Uh, what are people going to think? People are going to want to do this themselves. People are going to go to their doctors demanding this treatment, but it hasn't been approved and it doesn't exist yet. And therefore, we won't publish the paper. We won't let the world know. And of course, one of the benefits of publishing a paper like this is not so that you and me uh, can then go and, and, and you know, grow viruses and inject them into our bodies. But it's so that doctors can read this and say, huh, that's an interesting line of research. Maybe that's what I should be doing. Maybe, maybe I can you know, it, develop uh, my own research in that direction. Maybe we can create some real tests to be able to do this on a mass scale, because that's what you want in the end. You want to be able to do this on a mass scale. I mean, imagine if we could just inject cancer cells with these viruses and cause the body to kill the cancer. I mean, that, that is ideal. That's, uh, these kind of therapies, uh, this kind of idea of stimulating the body to respond to cancer and to kill the cancer without drugs is the ultimate in cancer treatment. It, it, it's where cancer treatment, that's the holy grail of cancer treatment. That's what everybody wants in cancer treatment because it has no side effects. It's, it's your own body doing it. I'm sure it has some side effects, but a minimal, because it's, again, your own body doing it. Maybe there's side effects on the virus, but they're minimal. Anyway, it was finally accepted for publication. The paper was uh, published. Um, and uh, now there is a huge uh, battle. Uh, the story is being published in, um, in uh, Nature. Um, and now there's a huge battle going on on Twitter and in, within the scientific community. Is this legit? Is this legit, right? Um, so, uh, you know, there are doctors out there, there are people saying, well, what she did, you know, the, the, the Nature article is, is, is misrepresenting what actually happened. There are others saying, you know, this is not ethical, this is wrong. This is wrong to do. This is wrong to publish. If you remember during COVID, I actually talked about it on the show at some point, there were people, at, I think at MIT and other places, designing their own COVID vaccines and injecting themselves with all kinds of homemade COVID vaccines. But, but these are scientists, real scientists, who were doing this. There was a little group, and they were sharing information, and, they, and, and there was a huge outcry, right? Uh, it means not be tested. How dare you do it? The authorities have not given permission. They haven't approved it. Um, so this is part of that. I mean, this idea that your body, you know, uh, uh, your body is yours. Your body is yours. Not just, that doesn't just mean you have a right to have an abortion. That also means you have a right to experiment on yourself. You have a right to biohack yourself. You have a right to inject yourself with viruses as long as you're not injecting yourself with something, something that can hurt other people. The, 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 the right to... Um, the right to uh, experiment on yourself is part of the right to your own body and to doing with your body as you see fit. It's part of your freedoms, it's part of your rights, and the idea that it's somehow wrong. I mean, it might be scientifically wrong, it might have been, uh, it might have been, uh, what do you call it? I, I can understand other doctors reading the article and saying, oh, you know, it's, it, it, this was an overreaction on her part. They might say, oh, it, it, these results are not, uh, we can't really learn anything from this, so there's nothing new here. There's, I'm sure I can understand scientific criticism of it, but there's no ethical criticism. I mean, she did what she thought, rationally, I think, would save her life, would improve her chances of survival without the horror of chemo. Whether, she, whether it worked or not is irrelevant to the fact that she had a right to try. That's what it means to have a right to your own body.